The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth, and as always with me are Swoosh and Jondo. Hi. Killers. Uh, and this week, uh, I mean, we're going to have to start with the biggest news that happened this week, which has been the Ocean Gate incident. Yeah, that's been entertaining. <laughs> really? What's that? <laughs> right, look, look. For those living under a rock. <laughs> or under the ocean. <laughs> a bunch of billionaires paid, uh, I've heard different amounts of money, but it's anywhere from 200000 to $275,000 yeah. to go on a sub trip down to personally look at the wreck of the Titanic. I wouldn't even call this a fucking submarine, to be honest. No, it's true. technically it. Look, it's a tube, and that's what a submarine is. That is true. But basically, it's a submersible vehicle. Yeah, theoretically, it can come back up. This one didn't. <laughs> <laughs> From what we can tell, it went down, and somewhere along the lines, it Stayed had down. a um, catastrophic uh, implosion. It? Catastrophic implosion. Yeah, and it broke apart. Yeah. And all these people are dead. Like, as, as horrible as A bunch as of is, people are dead. Yes. That did happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not good. That's not, not a fun thing. Like, they, they said that for the five people that are in there, they've already hit the point where there is no air left for them. But... Yeah. No, no, no. If the it's whole a thing exploded. Island, there's only one left. <laughs> ah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't in a, like, leaking air state. It mm. catastrophically exploded. Like, yeah, basically it was... Um, thankfully for them, it was over in an instant. Like, they would have... According to the schematics for this, um, this submarine, because all of their pressure stuff is based on acoustics, they would have had literally a split second of an alarm going off before the implosion. So they wouldn't even have been worried about it, to be honest. Hmm. Um, but, like, the more that this has been looked into, the deeper the hole for this thing has gotten. Like... The fact it was being run by a shoddy Logitech controller that is renowned like, for dropping con- ha- uh, dropping things. How do you get into that? Like one, like okay, this th- like a lot of people have like mocked up pictures making this thing look a lot worse than it. It, it didn't look like a complete lump of crap. Yeah, but how is a, a a billionaire? Do you get into that thing, then see someone pull out that Fisher Price looking piece of crap and good. go, yeah, this is what's going to control the sub. The weirdest thing is, I what? I, I props to them for actually going down into the water. To be honest, because there's no way they could ever confirm they were near the Titanic. Because no. literally, they were watching it all on a video screen. Yeah. There was one porthole. Oh yeah, in the in the bathroom, the the, the little shit. No, no, it's at the front. Was it? But you had to have all the lights on, which weren't working. Yeah. To be able to see anything out of it. Like, honestly, if this guy had been just a scam artist, these people would still be alive because he would just have gone down below the surface for, like, a few hours and say, oh, look, we're definitely there, and played some footage or something. But, but yeah, like, like, like... That whole thing with the the Logitech controller, like, you see some footage of them using drones in war zones, and they're using Xbox controllers, or, like... Mm, yeah. Granted, it's a much better controller <laughs> than what they're currently fucking using. More often than not, they're like custom made or custom built for them. It's like, yeah, this works. And they're dedicated and wired. They're not fucking Bluetooth. Yeah. I don't know, the whole thing, like, they must be a hell of a fucking salesman to get those people with that money in that fucking metal tub. (sighs) Jesus, like... I think the reason that... Because have you seen the way they had to get in and out? They were riveted in. Yeah. Like, you mm. could only get out from the uh, from the outside. So even if they found them at the, the last few minutes, they would not be able to save them. Mm. It's a matter of like, yeah, no, like we can't get this out in time. They're done. Mm. But the fact that the guy, the CEO, was in there, uh, the guy who cut all the corners and okayed the development of a very dangerous machine, um, I think that's the only reason everyone else would have gotten in. Like, it's like oh, you know, he trusts his product. I'll follow along with him. It ended badly. I mean, still, even like I just like I know I'm just some schleb talking post fact, mm. but I just can't imagine looking at that thing and going, "Yeah, that's a that's a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar ride right there." Yeah, 
Oh yeah, no, as a gamer, if I had gone in there and seen a Logitech controller, I'd be like, ha ha! Open that door and give me a fucking <laughs> refund, son. <laughs> Everything about that thing, like, the more images you see of it, it's like, no, 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 no. The one no. thing I like is the world has come together and said, you know what? Fuck it, we're making memes. Yeah. And they have made some pearlers. Holy shit. Oh. Like, Look, I'll freely admit, we're Australians. We got some dark ass humor. Yeah. Oof, there's some good shit. Oh, yeah. And like, it came out it is, quick. Like, it did, while but it didn't was like still happening, It was like, oh, yeah, yeah fuckers, they're stuck. Gone. <laughs> like. There's so many of them. We won't go through them at the moment because that's just poor taste of the I'm sure way, but... everyone listening to this has seen the memes. Oh, fuck, yeah. Because they, like, they at least everyone. one. At least one. Oh, yeah. A way you could have gone online without seeing one of them. Yeah, but it's like... It is one of those things where you can't be a billionaire without fucking people over. So a lot of people have seen this as a... Uh, you know, fuck you. Not a good thing, but a something they're okay with. Um, I mean, hell, like... Did you see one of the billionaires that stuck uh, that died? His son went to a Blink One Eighty Two concert, yeah, and tweeted about it, saying he thought uh, he thinks his family would be okay with him going. They'd want him there. It's like, mate, no, like you're a billionaire's son. You could probably hire Blink One Eighty Two to go to your house later in the week in the year. Go and spend some time with your fucking family. But that, uh, I, that's the rich. It's hard to find a a positive angle on this. Like, the whole yeah. thing, just, the more you look at it, the more it comes across is a joke. Everything about it is like, fuck me. Like, every step is like, here's a bad idea, let's make another bad idea. And another bad decision, let's throw another bad yeah. idea in there. It, fuck. It's one of those things where, like, there's so many points for someone to have just hard outed. Mm. Yeah. And no one did. There were so it many red flags. Like, if you'd said a bunch of rednecks did this, yeah, I'd be like... I, uh, that's on brand, that makes sense. They got in some hokey dunk thing that some dude slapped together, riveted them inside of them, and went, Go see the Titanic! Yeah, like, exactly. If, if that headline had started with, in Florida, it'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's understandable. Florida man. Oh, no. yeah, in Florida, he'd have just by, swung like, down there and then died. Yeah. yeah. The, the article would have died before the fucking thing had gone to print. But yeah. <laughs> because it's oh. billionaires in a metal tube to see Titanic... That well, ticks so many fucking boxes. A lot of people have brought up the fact that they were they were on a tragedy tour, essentially. They were going to look yeah. at a tragic thing, and essentially the mass grave of a lot of poor people. Yeah. Because whilst everyone was getting on the boats, preference was given to the upper classes on the Titanic. So yeah. they were going to look at the mass grave of a bunch of the working class, and they're paying a lot of money to do it. And that's what's got people very upset, like... No one thinks the Titanic should be a tourist spot. It, you know, investigate, get some pictures and all that kind of stuff so we can figure out what happened and how we don't do it again. But don't make it a spectator thing, man. Like, fuck. So, I have a dark sense of humor, I find that a bad test. I'd make that a spectator sport. Yes. <laughs> That'd be fun. Just so, kidnap billionaires and put them in cages and just make them fight. Be fine. Make, make it a sport of how deep in how flimsy of, uh, of a vehicle can we get them? No, you, like, you make it a, uh, a game show in the way of like, how fucked up can we give this premise before they finally realize it's fake and leave? Or what can we get these fuckers to go into? Like, yeah. Like, can we leave if a you cookie step crumb into this trail chamber. or candy or even like uh, dollar, dollar coins bills just leading them <laughs> into a tub and then fucking... How quickly can you seal the thing and send him to the Titanic? Oh, uh, well, I can think it was like the Family Guy. They go, "Ooh, he's candy. Ooh, he's candy. Ooh, he's candy." Right, I'm go I'm gonna get us to move on to this before we head into somewhere really. That's just gonna mean we never do. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna uh, we're gonna cut this one off before we get too dark. I think. <laughs> um, although the other celebrity thing, which I was gonna transition into, she gave me such a good setup and then moved away from it. Yeah, was sorry. that there's supposedly some beef going on right now where. Uh, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg want to have a cage fight. Um, I had a look into this because uh, John Doe posted a bunch, of, uh, posted a screenshot up about it, and it seems that like essentially Elon just posted a tweet about it, and Zuckerberg was like, "Tell me when." Yeah, but like, there's nothing serious like on the books. I'll no tell you exactly really when. It. It's gonna be in a metal tube, uh, somewhere <laughs> off the coast of America. <laughs> oh 
Oh god, yes. <laughs> Point is, I think the, the like this thing's getting a lot of traction simply because people think that they're at, like if they ever did end up in a cage, that they would beat the living shit out of each other. Oh god, no! It'd be a slap fight. They're not gonna. It's gonna be wiffle bats at best. Yeah, oh. like this is I, all I can see is like this generic, um, like stereotypical slap fight kind of thing from a cartoon. Like, eh, no, no. <laughs> It'll be credit cards at ten paces. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no! I can imagine Just them buying trying bits to of their company. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I have chosen my second. I don't think the turns out like two. Just that might be what they do. Both of them get knocked out really early. So the second stand in actual boxes. Uh, but Either no, we, way. We get them both in the cage, and then we just drop Mike Tyson in and let him go ham. Just great. I mean, seriously, man, like just let him like king hit Zuckerberg out, full Nelson Musky, and let every guy who worked he fired from Twitter get one bunch. I would pay good money to see that. Like, not even hell. Lie. I'd even go. They don't even get like to punch him in the face. Just like gut punch. Yeah. But, like it's just a conga line of people. One <laughs> gut punch. <laughs> They'd have to play conga music. Da, 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 whack. Yeah. <laughs> whack. <laughs> uh, run a contest on form. See who's got the best form for it. <laughs> best version of BPM ever. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't realised, we are horrible people. No. We're yeah, just look, man. If it took you what? What are we up to? You seventy three, and it took you this long. <laughs> that is true. Well, like, enjoy. But speaking of like just bullshit things, what was the um, oh the court case going on again? My brain just went dead. Uh, FTC Acti Blizz. Yeah, that's right. That one. It's that's been fun because not yeah. going in FTC's direction at all. They've yeah. uh, started the case or the the ev- started the evidentiary hearing because the yeah. FTC put a temporary block on the the purchase, and Microsoft is. Or they're in court at the moment trying to remove the temporary block. Pretty much as soon as that temporary block gets removed, it's extremely likely just going to close the deal over the top of everything and deal with the court case later. Yeah. But can't blame them. Uh, the FTC is currently trying to cherry pick evidence saying we, we're using this, but you can't use that over there. Or you can't use these these expert witnesses, but we're going to use these ones over here for this in particular, yeah. but you can't ask them anything else. Yeah. The head of Sony is given a deposition by video recording only, so he won't be in the courtroom, he won't be on Zoom, so he can't answer any questions. I, that alone makes me a bit cautious. Like. Well, when they first had to say who was going to be an expert witness or who was going to be available for questioning him and all of that, and they said the head of Sony was only going to be there, like, was only submitting a video, the judge <laughs> asked why. Like, the, yeah. he- the head office is in California... He has a private jet. Nothing else is as important as he should be mm. here right now for this. So that's yep. already a massive slap in the face to the FTC. So oh, fuck yeah. it's... that's that whole testimony is almost worthless now. Well, mm. things like putting forward a a video um, thing was always meant to be something for someone who shouldn't be in the courtroom. Uh, it was mostly for people like victims of sexual assault. And well, that they kind used of stuff. it they for during COVID for people who couldn't travel. Yeah, exactly. But like they've uh, FTC subpoenaed a number of Nvidia execs to come in and only talk about um, how hard it is to develop for the uh, for the streaming uh, stri- game streaming services. How how hard ah, it is yeah. to develop that because they use uh, GeForce now. But they're not allowed to talk about that they've currently got to deal with Microsoft to allow all of the games onto it. Really? So oh, they're God trying sake. to they're trying to force the courts to not hear about any current deals that Microsoft has already said we're putting it out everywhere so that they can then say sit they're not gonna put it out anywhere else. See, they're just gonna keep it to themselves. Yeah. It's like the Wizard of Oz essentially, don't look behind the curtain, ignore the man. Don't don't look behind the the clear plastic curtain at the billboard yeah. that says all of the shit we don't want you to see. Yeah. Like everything they've brought up, Microsoft is like they've they've brought up several things and it's like Microsoft have already made those deals. They've already stated this is what we're doing. Yeah. Like everything about it is just fucking stupid. 
Oh yeah, the, this the, all the started judges already said, "I intend on ruling on this very quickly. Like, will there'll yeah. be a, a result of this by mid to I think around Thursday. Thursday in Australia, where ex- they'd be expecting a full result on this. If that's the case, oh, yes. I see this deal being closed by fucking Friday. Same. Yeah. I I don't see it going any longer. At this point, do the deal. Deal with the repercussions later because it's not going to be as bad as it is currently. Yeah. Um, like, there's a there's been a, a lawyer who has been following this case from the get go. Um, uh, he deals with a lot of these copyright, or not so much. Oh, copyright, I, I know but, the guy. I, I've uh, seen some of his TikToks. Florian Mueller. Uh, yeah. He's been following it, but he's literally sitting in the courthouse and live tweeting the entire thing. So, nice. if you want info on it, just look him up on Twitter. Because, holy fuck, I've absolutely loved reading some of this shit. Because he ex- explains it really well in a f- mm. relatively clear way, and yeah, it's just really fucking good. Uh, Florian yeah, no, Miller on Twitter or uh, I've seen some of on YouTube. Pop up on, he does a really good um, one as well. I've seen some of his stuff pop up on TikTok, but I think it's people re, uh, reposting his stuff. Not yeah. Probably. So. But even uh, there was meant to be a, a, an email that came out uh, saying that uh, Microsoft wanted to purchase Call of Duty so they could run Sony out of business completely. And that was uh, a big thing that blew up for a little while there. It was used in the gamers versus Microsoft case and all of that. Yeah. And they very much cherry pick the the text of what's in that document. They don't show that it's from four years before there was even a thought of actually buying Activision. It was yeah. a, an internal conversation between two people saying, "Ha ha, what if we did this?" Yeah. They, and they've actually put, uh, got the person who sent the email and the person who received the email in court as witnesses, so they can sit up and say, they can ask him the fucking question. What is the context of this? Sony couldn't even put a person up. They're the biggest fucking people Ooh. against it. Like, yeah. No one from Sony, no one from Google. They're the only two companies that are against it. Well, that's the fun thing where those things, oh, we can put Sony out of business. Sony's doing a really good job of that themselves currently. Like, I don't know what they're doing. They're, but they're doing fine, They'll be, they'll be right absolutely now. fine. They're just having oh, yeah. a bit of a slump with releases. But... They, they also came out and in a, a bit of a show of spite saying that if Microsoft buys Activision then they're not going to show any of the the PS6 uh, specs to Activision so they can't develop the game for it like well that's just cutting off your nose to spite your face like yeah, you, had, like... you had zero fucks when Microsoft bought Mojang for fucking Minecraft you mm. left that as full development for PS4 no. 5 they, they, they were still shitty about that because Microsoft and Nintendo can pl- cross-platform. Sony doesn't. Sony yeah. doesn't want to come to the no, party. but that's Sony's decision. Like, they chose. Yeah. They, they full flat access, they can have it cross. if they want it. Oh, yeah. So it's... Yeah, Sony's very much the the kid chucking a tantrum in the corner for this whole fucking thing. And then oh, when yeah. you say, well, what is your actual problem? I don't need to fucking tell you. Well... Yeah. You do, but fuck you. It's like, are you just jealous then, they got the deal? Is that what's going on, Sony? But even then, you look at something like that that email. Yeah. Oh, uh, we, we want to cross... Doesn't every company want to do that to their competitor? Yeah. Any, any competitor is against the law, is illegal. Hyper-competitive mm. is extremely encouraged. Like, they yeah. want you to be hyper-competitive to compete in the market. Like, <laughs> fuck. Go for gold, bud. Yeah. If they, if, uh, it's one of those weird things. I, I hate that it's been going on for so long. I generally don't care if they buy these guys. They yeah. won't have a full monopoly. There's still things out there. Well, they're because, still a fucking long way in third place in the console yeah. market. And even when they mm. say they're not going to include Nintendo because uh, the the latest Xbox and the the PS5, uh, they're they're estimating a twenty. 2,600% more powerful. So 2,600% more powerful than the Switch. That's the weird thing. They're but the Switch does one of the best-selling games of the year. Yeah. Well, it's like, they always keep saying, oh, no, the, the, we're more powerful than the Switch. Like, that's fine. But I know more people with the Switch than I do an Xbox or a fucking PlayStation. Yeah. Like, every household seems to have a Switch now. That, to me, is a number one console. 
Yeah. There's a switch sitting on my desk right now. Yeah, yeah me too. Same. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, I... It might not but, be a very in-depth gaming system some days, but you don't need it to be. It's fun and ent- entertaining, yeah. and Nintendo keeps their fucking nose clean more often than yeah. not. And it's massively competing on sales. Like, for console yeah. sales, yeah, good luck. The, like, to say they, that can't compete in the same market, it already is, and it's winning. Yeah. At, at this point, yeah. calling them not a threat is just a dumb thing to do. But particularly since Microsoft something. already said, we are bringing, like, we get this, we're bringing Call of Duty to Nintendo. Yeah. Mm. Like, I don't know what kind of scaling they have to do, because I don't know if it would handle, I don't, it wouldn't look as pretty, I know that. But, no unless way. they do some sort mm. of fucking streaming for it. But, maybe that's a whole nother market of a massive console base. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. But there's and also... Like, imagine, but a bit, like, Call of Duty's big thing is multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah. As you're rolling up to like a convention or something, you like I know, I mean I know. Oh God, I'm about to sound really old. I remember when me and and John Doe went to Supernova Ring in Brisbane <laughs> one year. We had our switches, yeah, not no, switches, our uh, DSs, yeah, and we were just sitting in the line playing games with people. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck in the line they were, but we were playing. Yeah, Nintendo's Fucking, always uh, been a good only social Only one gaming. person had to buy a copy of Mario Kart and you could play it with seven other people. Have an eight-person yeah. yeah. Mario Kart for one console. Fuck, that's great. So, imagine doing the same thing, but you just walk into the line, play it, you switch, and you've got a Call of Duty game. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. But, but uh, was it Microsoft's willing to pay $69 billion for Activision. I read a thing, the whole PlayStation department of Sony is... My, has an estimated value of less than 50 billion yeah they're buying COD for more than fucking Sony's worth and Sony's bitching like maybe that's why they're shitty like they've it's made them look at their own market value and go oh no we're lower than the, at, this thing at this point if Microsoft wanted to throw the money out there they could literally develop their own competing console yeah just run their own own market to compete against themselves just shits and giggles throw it out there I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm pretty sure Microsoft's just getting out of the console game. They're yeah. getting into the service game and they're winning. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are definitely And that's, that's the biggest problem Sony's facing. They're not willing to update their model. They feel mm. like they are the last holdout for the console wars. Everyone else is like, we're fine. Microsoft will now work with Nintendo and want to do some sharing. They put the olive branch to Sony. But like, no, no, no. You stay over there. You've got cooties. We're not going to talk. It... There was very much a similar argument in the the 360 PS3 era when yeah. Xbox was on top of the fucking console food chain, and mm. they didn't want to have console sharing. They didn't want to have crossplay. None of that. It's just it's our yeah. thing. But now Sony's back on top, and they're doing the exact same thing. Where right now Microsoft's making all these fucking deals. So yeah, yeah. They they don't mm. want to lose that where they are essentially. But um, what was but the they other are. thing that popped up? And quickly, they definitely like, are. Yes, they, they might be on top, but their whole foundation's crumbling. Well, they're they're acting like a fucking pork chop, and people don't want to see that. So it tends to be no. Sony fanboys don't want to see that. Yeah, everyone else is loving it. Oh, yeah, just think back two weeks to the the fucking um, summer games first. Yeah, yeah Sony uh, showed off dick shit. Xbox fucking ruled the roost. Yeah, yeah. Even I haven't like seen the, the Nintendo Direct, Direct but apparently it was really good as well. Mm. Oh, I haven't watched that one yet either myself. Uh, what was the um, the sur- not the survey going around? The bloody oh the okay. It's a look. I swear, like it has to be a troll. I have I have to believe it's a troll. I have to. I think because it's if it's not, it means that this guy is so fucking brain dead to make this thing. It's a change that old position to get Starfield to be an exclusive PS5 game because they're up in arms about it being at an exclusive Xbox game and the Xbox isn't powerful enough. It won't look any good on Xbox. It'll only look really good on PlayStation. No, it'll only look really good on PC. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know where the frame cap's gonna get unlocked. Yeah. Yay. Like, that, I swear, it had to have started as a troll but it has now been co-opted by people who think it's real. That's all mm. I can hope to get my any kind of hope for humanity back. Like, but it's fucking dumb. 
everything about it, like, the more you look into that, the more you see people are actively, like, are actually <laughs> fucking complaining that there's yeah. something that, that's good to play in another console and I want it, where I've already got all the things that everyone else has wanted to play. Like, yeah. Fuck me. Even, like, when they did public submissions for the the ActiBlues purchase, a mm. lot of that was, um, they could have ActiBlues, but Call of Duty needs to be taken away and given to Sony exclusively. Like, no. Why? <laughs> really? Explain why. No! Yeah. Like, okay. It just should be, because it's better on here. <laughs> that's always the fucking argument, though. It's like, every time, it's like, alright, cool, that's your position. Please explain why. Like, oh, I don't have to explain shit to you. Like, you, you kind of do at this point. You're putting forward change.org petitions and going to court. But if, who the, what company is going to listen to that? There's a thousand people that signed a change.org petition. Throw out the entire business model. We're going to follow that. Yeah. No one's going to we'll, fucking listen to it. You get 20 the, million signatures um, and most people ignore it. Yeah. I skipped down to the bottom to see what the comments were like on that mm. petition, and most of them were sign the petition just to leave this comment. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Like, a vast majority of like, I would want to put my name down saying you're a fucking idiot, so you know who was saying you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, I wanted so to be a part of stupid on those history unless you sign them. Yeah. Mm. Oh god, that is fucking idiotic. It, it has to be a troll. I have to believe it's a troll. No, I, I want to believe it's a troll. That's the thing. I want to, but at the same time, I have so little faith left in people. It's like, he might be real. It, it, it could be a person doing this. It's definitely a person doing this, but is it a yes. person with an actual idea in their head that they properly believe? Or is it a person going, ha this will be fucking funny. Has this person drunk the Kool-Aid or are they a troll? Which one are you? Mm. Is it, have they drunk the Kool Aid or have they already put the arsenic in it? <laughs> yeah, like it's oh, I, gaming is weird now. I why do we, do, do do we want to move on to some gaming stuff that's actually positive for once? Please, yes, please. bitching. <laughs> so I wanted to have a bit of a chat this week, uh, particularly because on many of our previous episodes we've talked about how the AAA gaming sphere is just trash, turning into a problem. Or people shooting for AAA and not getting anywhere close. No. Yeah, and I keep I've been continually saying, look, you've got to look at Double AA. A. Double A is so much stronger than people think it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I've recently played two games that I gen I personally would consider much more in that Double A sphere. Mm. Um, those being Evil West and Aliens: Dark Descent. Fucking love Evil West. I haven't finished it, but I love that game. And both of them feel so squarely in that space, and they are really good hmm. and they're di- good they uh, in, for my opinion they exist in that space for two different reasons yeah so Evil West uh, looks pretty good hmm. plays pretty well it's reasonably stable I've had very few frame drops I actually got less frame drops after I turned off motion blur yeah yeah same it was weird and it, it, it feels pretty competent and then you go th- while I was playing it I'm like okay so what are we doing now okay so like you're introducing this mechanic and then one enemy, and then that enemy is a group, and then a new enemy, and then you're folding the two enemies into one fight experience, and yeah. then you're giving me a new ability and a new weapon, which changes up slightly how the combat works. Wait a minute, this is like the PowerPoint slides from when I was in uni on yeah. how to make a game. Yeah. This is Dead 101. It, <laughs> it is a polished, to-the-books game, and I like it. I have zero issue with that. Yeah. Because someone out there went... Oh, there's actually some, like, solid foundational rules to how to make a game experience good for the yeah. player. How to get, yeah. a, how and to then get a player involved that. in a game. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing is the writing is also really fucking good. Like, yeah, it's not bad. The fact that they, um, they what they call vampires, like, there's, like, a, the big long Sahagan or whatever the hell the name is, but they, they just call them ticks. I'm like, ha! I love it. I personally would petition that we call all vampires ticks from this point because <laughs> it is so good. It is a really good one. It's it's great. You're but blood sucking uh, parasite, yes. Although like I haven't played much of it, I need to go back and continue going. But I got distracted by other things. But I still love their archive. Oh yeah, their archive was messed up, like in the best way possible. I will spoil this small thing for people. The archive is... Basically, when you hunt a vampire, you take its head, because they're still alive. They can reform. Take it back to the the main base, 
put it in a jar and link it to a bunch of other heads, and that is their archive for information. They torture <laughs> the heads until they give them information. <laughs> Love it, it is so fun. Because like, you walk through, like, and they all start yelling at you. It's like, ah, shut the fuck up. And just goes, puts it in the, the, the thing. It's, like, oh. it's, so it's just good. got such style to it. Like, someone had a really strong idea, mm. and then just went, let's just execute. Yeah. Don't get fancy with it. Don't get dumb. Just do it. One thing and then I they just did. Yeah, one thing I liked about it actually was the fact that it had the illusion of being an open world, but was in fact extremely linear. Like, yeah, you go through, but everything is expansive and lo- very beautiful. And you're in a canyon. It's like, ooh, that looks interesting. I can't go over there, but fuck, it looks nice. It's a well built world and gives you the illusion of freedom, but keeps you on a very strict leash, which I kind of need in gaming, to be honest. I like. I had a little bit of a problem with it when I started because I'm I've been playing a lot of more open world games. Mm. I've gotten kind of used to poking the edges. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, I need to stop doing that in this game because the edges are actually really close. Yeah, and poking them is ruining the illusion. Mm. But when I just fucking follow the markers and go, yeah, this game actually is pretty good. It's holding together really well. It's like it feels weird to go back to a game where it's just like just fucking play it, dude. Yeah. You don't have to look under every rock, flip every barrel, and look for every fucking Korok seed. Yeah. Just, just go beat up the next thing. It's fine. That You're was the good. issue I had playing uh, Jedi Survivor. It's like, run around. Here's the thing. I can't do the thing. I'll, I'll try and remember that. Here's another thing. And by that stage, I've forgotten the last fucking thing. And yeah. having to run around, go back and find all of the fucking things. Yeah, just shit me. Yeah. Nah. I, I'm I mean, not going to have that problem with Evil West. But <laughs> yeah. that's, I think, it's its strength. They knew they couldn't execute an open world, so they just didn't. Yeah. They narrowed their focus, and it shows, and it does well. It's also on remember, special right now, so please go get it. Yeah, it just, uh, I mean, it just launched on GOG, mm. um, and it's got its 40% discount, so it's down to, I think, it's about 50 bucks. Yeah. Australian, worth it. and I think it's well worth that 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's, it's just fun. Right. And the other game I played was uh, Aliens Dark Descent. Now, this is a, a top-down squad tactics game. And it's an Aliens game, so it kind of felt like, how are we going to play this? Is it going to be like super action-focused, sort of a la Aliens 2? Or are we going to go for something a little more tense? But if they're going for the action focus, like how well is it going to play? Because this isn't a big developer. You know, what are we doing? Hmm. Turns out they went... The best thing we can do is we can make sure the alien feels dangerous. Yeah. Because when the alien feels dangerous, you don't even need that many. It doesn't even have to be on screen and you feel the tension. You can hear the scream and then you shit yourself. (laughs) And that's what they did. So what they did is they introduced a mechanic called the hunt. Hmm. So when you're out on a mission, you'll be running around doing stuff. And if you run into a xenomorph, you can fight it. And you've got your pack of burly colonial marines with their pulse rifles and everything. Urad. And you can fight it. But once you fight one, the hunt begins. At which point the hive starts sending more aliens to get you. And you start the hunt clock. Which is a progression bar that slowly ticks up. As it ticks up and you clear certain uh, levels of it, you'll trigger um, assault waves where more aliens show up to try and kill you. And then eventually higher tier aliens will uh, be mixed into the pack as well. So, it's really important as a player, you really want to keep that hunt meter as low as you can for as long as you can. Because if you do a big set piece and you've got a high hunt count, you're going to have a problem. Also, you can hide from the aliens once the hunt counter has started. You can stop the hunt. Mm. But the hunt counter doesn't go back down. I like that. So, So their alert level doesn't drop. Yeah, mm. you've already stirred well, up the you, ant's nest. It, it's if you like trigger it again; it kicks off straight away at the same level you were at before. Like, can you imagine that in any other game? Like, imagine that in Grand Theft Auto Five, where it's like you get in trouble again, you're back up to a five star rating. Holy shit, that'd be terrifying for me. But see, like, um, that's a power fantasy game, mm. so that's why they don't. Yeah. Whereas this, they need the alien to feel oppressive. Mm. So even when it's not around, you're like, is it? Yeah. One of the things they do is, like, you, you can't see in any direction that there isn't light facing. Mm. So if you go past a corridor, unless you actually hit the button to look down the corridor with a flashlight, you don't get to see if there was anything down there. 
there could have been an alien down that corridor and well now he's coming to chew on your butt I, I like that mechanic but at the same time I'm a little bitch for like horror and suspense <coughs> games so that would probably end up killing me um, <laughs> but like honestly I've been waiting to hear your like response on this one because you are the aliens nerd in this group <laughs> and I'm like I'm, I saw it and I'm like mm, I'm gonna wait until Seth checks this out and if it gets the okay I might grab it and now I have grabbed it so see I like it and like it's not too oppressive one of the things I think is really good is they let you do missions multiple times you don't have to clear the whole thing in one go hmm. because your your marines get stressed and if they get too stressed they'll freak out and they can get negative traits so you want to pull them out before they get too freaked out but it, it's clever and instead of trying to create this elaborate setup with all these crazy mechanics to try and get like, like they didn't try to do Alien Isolation yeah Isolation's a great game though if you haven't played it it's very good um they just wanted to get the tension, so they created a very clear to the player, look, you fucked up a couple of times, and now your hunt meter's gone up, and you need to keep it down. You've got more to do. And that works. That just worked for me to create that. And it didn't require them to create some elaborate system. They didn't have to make this huge push for fidelity. They could keep it in this pull that camera view. And you want to hide from the aliens. Yeah. Like, they created that sense no. in you just by going, it'll get worse if you don't. Yeah, you should have to hide from the alien. Like, mm. they're not something you should be able to face tank and mm. keep moving from. Like, Well, like, the Xenomorph became, uh, like, the, it, it started following the ninja rule, where it's if there's multiple mm. aliens, they are useless. They are there to, like, fall and die. But if there's one of them, fucking run. You're not going to win. Mm. Yeah. Like, but this sort of flips the other way, because, like, one, you can handle, but... It, it, they, they follow sand people rules ah yeah it may be gone now but it'll be back in greater numbers yeah and there won't be a space wizard to help you this time but uh, it feels like they've taken a little bit of like alien one uh, oh, the first alien and then aliens so like yeah you've got the whole lead up of like tension like, where is it fuck what's going on and then oh fuck we're on boys and then you've got to try and step back to alien one mm. to keep progressing before you kick mm. into the Act two and three of Aliens, <laughs> which yeah. is what I want and, from an Aliens game. To be honest, like I want that yeah. fear. I want to be yeah. scared of this thing. But, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's great. A AAA studio would have wanted to be able to get like, oh no, it, it's got to be like eviscerating you and tearing you apart and limbs mm -hmm. going everywhere. It's going to be a gore fest. And <laughs> look, man, that's not bad. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. I played yeah. the the what, the. AVP game where they went for high fidelity and you can like tail spike people and it's cool but I enjoyed that game it was dumb it, it, it's just action it doesn't yeah. feel like I'm dangerous or that I'm in danger yeah this I game nails it yeah and they did it on a lower budget AVP was a popcorn game which is like you know clock out play the game you're good but this mm. one I think from what I've seen you kind of have to be paying attention at least some yeah, yeah to you some degree can't you can't put zone out pilot. from from my feeling of it, uh, if a AAA developer for this would have gone more the direction of Aliens Fireteam Elite. Yeah. Yeah. It's where it's more yeah. wave and wave of enemy, you just throw bullets at them and keep moving. Mm. It doesn't have that same danger feel mm. other than it's a Zerg Swarm. Yeah. Or they'd have tried to do, like, uh, like what's popular? Oh, it's a tactics game. Oh, we'll just do XCOM. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this feels unique and different and someone tried something and guess what? It fucking works. Mm -hmm. I like it when this And that's works. what you get in that double A space and I'm, I'm so much more excited for anything where I'm like, ooh, that's feeling very double A right now. <laughs> Honestly, um, I will take a double A game over a triple A game right now. Um, like, so far they yeah. haven't burnt me. That's the thing. Like, I, I know what I'm getting into. because the price tag's that. usually lower so yeah. I feel less critical. I'm not like, true. all right, all right, I pony, like, we're in Australia, so I ponied up my hundred bucks. Entertain me. Oh, I paid, like, forty bucks for this. Yeah. yeah. Throwing fifty dollars down on the game, it feels like you can actually, like, sit back and, oh, it's got a few rough edges here and there. Eh, I can live with that. If I paid a hundred and something bucks for it, it's like, I don't want to fuck a rough edge. I want fuck a hundred dollars yeah. worth of fucking game here. That extra 40 bucks means this bitch works. Yeah. I mean, like, like, not to toot their particular horn, but, like, these these two games came from um, Focus Home Entertainment. And 
they're doing really well at picking really good double A games mm. and pricing them well. I mean, like Dark Descent, sixty bucks. Bolt Gun, thirty one dollars. Uh, Evil West, currently thirty four dollars because it's on sale for fifty percent off. Um, they did Plague Tale, seventy bucks. I do uh, like Shipbreaker, forty seven bucks. God damn, uh, they did Fire Team. Fire Team was only forty bucks. I enjoyed Shipbreaker. Um, I haven't gone back to play it in a while. I have a lot of games I've started but haven't finished because my brain is a squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Um, Necromunda Hired Gun, 50 bucks. It's like, it's all in that double A area. And I never feel that bad that I paid the money. No. Yeah. Like, like that Shipbreaker game is one of the few games where it's like, I leave it installed. It's like, I've got an hour or so. I don't want to sink into a game where I don't remember the story. Let's just tear a spaceship apart. No. And then yeah. I don't touch it again. And I fucking love it. Very much. Like for me, it's a kind of game similar to Viscera Cleaner. It tickles oh, the little lizard brain. Like, <laughs> I hate cleaning up, but I'll clean up a weird gun shootout scene <laughs> in a fucking right? video game. I will clean up after the thing. Like it was That game in general was fun. And I kind of wish there was more of it, to be honest. That was a really simple, straightforward game. Just cleaning up after the video game protagonist has breeze through a mission like mint oh uh, yeah so like triple a like look i'm not gonna i look i'm excited to play you know Star starfield yeah. and um outlaws yeah. and i want to play the expansion pack for cyberpunk mm. but i'm just as excited for lies of p yeah yeah like it's and, i think the gap between uh double a and triple a is slowly shortening and that is solely on AAA in most cases for dropping their standards and for like AA for going, you know what? We're just going to polish this thing we have. No feature creep. We're just going to yeah. focus on what we want and make a worthwhile product, uh, which is yeah. what you need. And then there's like, you know, single A games in the background eating paste. We don't talk about them. But <laughs> I'm not even sure what that would be. My Little Pony Adventure. Uh. Something. Like just movie tie in games. That's what it is. I'd probably say it's probably stuff published by Devolver. Yeah. It'll be something with a quirky... Kirk, yeah, blah, blah. Nah, it's quirky now. Kooky aesthetic that just plays really well, but it's like 30 bucks and yeah. whatever. But, uh, for but you know, we're keen for A them. titles, but yeah. I'd probably call like uh, N++, uh, Thomas Was Alone, those style of games. Oh, yes. Yeah. Things that are weird and different and off the wall, but polished like yeah. really quality Thomas was alone they're just a not wonderful game I still maintain that should be taught in unis for like narration as a oh. uh, game mechanic yeah narration and like character connection like making you feel yeah. for a fucking mm. character mm. I felt things for Tetris blocks it's not that's not fair that shouldn't be a no, thing no. Fucking no it's not everyone should play Thomas was alone yeah if you haven't fucking like, fixed that even shit. if you don't mm. like gaming I don't give a fuck play Thomas was alone Holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Find that one game a friend you have, kick him off his computer and play that so one game. I got told to play this shop. game. I'm playing it this runs game. On, it will run on tablets. It's a very low impact game. Oh, yeah. like, you could get it running on basic anything. And it doesn't even take that long to finish. No. It's not like like you sit down for an afternoon, you're going to be done. It's not dedicating days to it. Hmm. And you get and to that's listen exactly to what it should nice, be. Like narration the entire time. It's good fun. Yeah. But, uh, actually, like we, we're just hitting the forty-five minute mark now, but we may have to switch to the next uh, thing because we're going to get heated on this one. Well, that I think we've run out of steam. The point is, though, double A good. Play more double A games. Absolutely. Yeah, check them out. Anyway, oddly enough, check out Evil West and Alien Doctor Set. <laughs> Definitely do that. Yes, absolutely. Downloading Aliens. Well, as soon as we're done here, I'll be downloading Aliens. Um, so, so I went to the cinema yeah, yeah, last can... night. <laughs> don't yeah I'll talk about how great the Adelaide cinema is yes. later maybe but holy fuck they had some of the best deals ever anyway <laughs> I watched fucking Transformers the new Rise of Beasts whatever the fuck it is to Beast put this Wars... in the context uh, John Doe is one of the biggest Transformer nerds I have ever found like, I just like you the, know more about G1 more than most people <laughs> yeah Changing robots make the fun sound. They do. And, like, 
if you go into a Transformers movie expecting anything more than giant robots shooting each other, you're expecting too much. Like, but, I remember we went and saw the first Transformers together and just, you were so angry. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Well, but not angry, you were disappointed. You were disappointed. Very much so. Critics. And this one yeah. is, this one isn't cheesy, it's dick cheesy. Like, every yeah. bad movie trope available they do everything from like the hero is falling oh suddenly he's grabbed it's a fucking 80 ton robot being held up by an 80 kilo person yeah what yeah, yeah. oh that arm should not be in the socket anymore <laughs> it should not be attached so, in any way shape or the form only thing i was interested about with this movie and i was fully expecting it to be done badly i am a massive fan of beast wars same and it was like, okay, we're bringing Optimus Primal in. Okay, that's interesting. You want to deal with the Maximals. Okay, mm. let's go. And I'm expecting it to be terrible. You get, they transform once, right at oh. the very end. And it's not, it's like, they're already running. There's already shit happening on the screen. And it's a, a Maximals maximize the whole thing. And then yeah. while other action is happening, while the screen is already cluttered, small transformation sequence off to the side. Oh, wow, oh, that's a fuck move. Sake. It pissed me off. Like, the Optimus Primal, he gets like a, a full splash screen of like, he's a monkey, suddenly mm. shit happens. Now he's a person with a giant hammer. Yeah. It's not a detailed thing. He's just suddenly got a shield on. Um, None of the others get a clean... Like every other Look transformer in it gets like a, a full like thirty second almost cutscene of like the whole transformation of like the car and suddenly the arms come out, the head comes out, the legs Yeah. Mm. Here's a fucking robot, how awesome is that? These you don't get any of that, and that annoyed the yeah, shit man. out of me. Oh uh, so like, like Rhinoch and Cheetor, I'm assuming get nothing at all, like No. Like well, they, there, they turn up, they get about four lines, and then that's mm. it their background characters what? for the entire thing that is utter nonsense why would the fu- why would they do that they were fun that, characters they were completely obsolete they may yeah. as well have brought the fucking Dinobots back into it oh I forgot about that that was I unfortunate mean, the annoying thing is like when you bring in the Maximals that means you have the chance to use um T-Rex Predacon oh. Predacon Megatron yeah who doesn't want a, roller skating Tyrannosaurus Rex? Fuck it right? They had so many options. Like, they do go a little into the Beast Wars lore of, like, where your yeah. future and your past. Like, they go through the whole thing. They've stolen a time gate. They go back in time. They land on yeah. Earth. But it's still set... Like, this is set in, like, the mid-90s. So hmm. the Bumblebee movie is still part of this canon. Um, yeah. I actually kind of liked the Bumblebee movie though, so it's disappointing it to hear that, that this one's the bad this, that one's still part of this, and they actually reference yeah. it just because you had a good time with the human once doesn't mean any of them are good. Like Optimus Prime is a dick in this, and wow. uh, he was already going the way I'm of going being on a, a dick different fucking tangent ones. from what I wanted to say. But the Optimus Prime model, the body is fucking great. They do the proper '80s G1 Optimus Prime body is fucking great, yeah. but his head is wrong. They, yeah. they did the same thing they did with the first movie where they gave him... They had to give him lips so they could tell him when he was talking. Oh, God. The, the mouth shield that moves. But I've been fine with a moving mouth shield. Why did they have to give him lips? Watching it, it's like they've taken the Optimus Prime head, which should be quite boxy, and they've hmm. squeezed it in and made it longer. So his nose is, like, takes up the vast proportion of his, of his face. Hmm. It just okay. it looks weird looking at it. Yeah, I don't I know really, if you can find an image of it or not, but the whole body, the to. transformation is like G1 Optimus Prime. This is fucking awesome, but his head just doesn't feel right. Looking at it, it's hard to say yeah. exactly what the issue is, but when you look at it, it's like this is wrong. Like they this got is, so close, a, then fucked This is a Transformers the Uncanny Valley. Yeah. Although the real question I want answered is: Do we get Waspinator at any point? In no. This? God fucking damn it! You get. From what I understand, there are no predacons. There are no predacons one. at all. That is okay. There, are, um, did there they, are no did the Decepticons win? at all. Wait, what? Are, Who the fuck are they fighting? Unicron. They're fighting humans. 
Oh, okay, fair. No, it's Unicron. Uh, you, he appears like twice on screen, but only as a planet. You never see a Unicron transformation, which is what I really wanted to fucking see. Like, that would from be the, great. the 84 movie, I wanted to see that whole fucking transformation of a giant fucking oh. robot in space. You're just like, fuck, yes. fuck you. And but no, also no Matrix of Leadership, no Rodimus Prime, nothing. Devo. Oh, to be fair, you Rodimus RC, Prime was a weird. And the RC is actually really cool. Nice. But you get a proper RC, not the the fucking three motorcycle monstrosities yeah. that were in one of the previous fucking not the, movies. Not the one with like, well, we need to hit our diversity quota, split RC into three. Like, also, that was a weird mix. in this, apparently, you can't kill a Transformer. You just can't. What? Bumblebee gets his like whole guts and soul ripped out and completely yeah. deactivated but he, they lay him on a rock when the rock turns on Bumblebee's back yay um, mm. uh, Mirage gets completely destroyed to pieces a full shutdown oh he's dead and then oh, oh, I'm I'm here I'll, I'll need you to take the wheel and suddenly he's a mech suit god d- really really oh. like from like they do reference it back to like the old G1 cartoons where they make a a suit for, for Daniel who can now transform into a little car thing and he's yeah. wearing like a little Mirage suit but it just doesn't feel right and the CG for that is bad it's like an yeah. absolute just uh, we've made a model and we've just made the inner face green and we're just going to plaster a 2D face on that and that's good enough oh god that that's giving me like quantum mania it's like they already burned fucking... all the the VFX budget and then we're back and go, oh fuck we need a face oh shit let's let's just green screen a face on that do they really need a face though because it's a transformer it can have just it's a, a person giant in a transformer uh, he turns uh, in a little mech suit and so they had to have a, a clear face screen to show there's a person in there uh i and it's after do the iron man thing yeah like they they literally face with with a digital- they did the whole thing of like the the body thing comes over but then they had to have a face no I mean like in Iron Man anytime they wanted to show Robert Downey Jr's face they just put him in a black background with like a little yeah. digi display in yeah. front of him but then to show that he's in the but suit but then you couldn't have gotten the the necessary moments of the the longing look in the eye at the the danger that's coming for the whole background to see but my only response to that is Mandalorian yeah <laughs> yeah but there's a point in the movie where Unicron is sucking up big chunks or about to suck up big chunks of the plane he turns his big fucking vacuum on sucks the whole things up and Optimus Prime is getting sucked up with it giant mm. fucking robot weighs several hundred tons and the yeah. human in a mech suit grabs him hmm that should be the it's other like, way around because physics is a thing yeah, so how much does that little fuck away um, all of and it. then like the, the classic like I'm gonna hang on to you. I'm never gonna let go. And then Optimus lets go of the act he's hanging on to. And but mm. half a second later, another character that already fucked off hours before is suddenly right there. To, I'll never let you go. Like, fuck me. How many oh, tropes do they need to fucking slap into this bastard? At this point, the only thing I want from this movie is for it to re- a good resurgence to people wanting to know what the fuck Beast Wars is, and we might get a redo of that A proper Beast TV Wars show. movie. The one like, trope they did miss out on was the whole, no. Like, it's the one How they many Wilhelm out on. screams, though? And they like, actually you... had the opportunity to do it, but they oh. didn't. They even had the, the good guy turns to bad, and they're about to shoot him, and then the, the other good guy stops him, and that comes back to bite him in the ass. They did yeah. everything. But... Fuck yeah, hell. like but, I knew it was going to be bad, but at the same time, it's like, come on. Guys. It's hard to describe how bad it is. Like from the sounds of it, it's a train wreck. That a train wreck's not even fun to watch. Like, I'm glad I've watched it once because I won't watch it again. <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> I've that's watched fair. the the old like three first three trans move, Transformers movies several times just because they're good popcorn movies. You put them on, yeah, you look, eat popcorn, I'll, you talk I'll shit. Turn your brain off and be done. I'll hold up the first one of those movies is actually pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Just as a robot fight movie, yeah. if you're yeah. a little too into Transformers, it's probably going to hurt you in certain ways. But it's generally just a robot movie. It's fine. Yeah. It's perfectly serviceable. Turn your brain off. Have a good time. Yeah. Once you get past that one, I find they get less. Oh, dependable. they go downhill yeah. quickly. You know but- what I actually want? I do want a Beast Wars movie because it has no humans. 
it's yeah. so far before humanity has evolved that it could literally be like, right, it is just robots beating the shit out of robots. Can we yeah. please have this now? But that's because we want it, which means we can't. No. Yeah. What that's what we are going to get also try. is in the, the mid credit scene... Oh, God, this. They go through a whole thing where they talk like the, the main human character and he's going for a job interview and he's trying to say he's done all this shit without saying he's done all this shit. And the person just starts outing like, well, how how about your, your big robot friends? It starts preluding to all this stuff and you, you're sitting there going, well, this is going to be a Sector 7 reference. So straight out. Yeah. They've referenced it in other movies. It's going to be Sector 7. So he gives him the business card and he reads the thing and then flips it over and it says G.I. Joe. I thought G.I. Joe was dead. Like, the last movie they had had Bruce Willis in it, and that couldn't even fucking save it. Yeah. Like, how so, are they getting another fucking legend? I don't know how Transformers are going to get another movie after this, but they're banking on a G.I. Joe movie. Maybe they're hoping At least a crossover. Like, I, yeah. I don't know where they're heading. Because I, I love the old Transformers stuff. It's campy and dumb, and I still love Beast Wars, despite the fact it hurts to watch because, like, I now know how 3D works and it's, 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 it has yeah, but I think I think that thing's got enough like good comedy in it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's to, got to good writing in it. That I will power through it. Like I like, can, I, mean, have I will. I still like the the image of fucking um, Megatron roller skating around in T Rex form just yeah. moves rent free in my head. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, even then, like, also, the rubber ducky. Like, every time he's in the, uh, the reconstruction bath, he's got a rubber ducky. Like, I love those little uh, it's, things. Anytime I want to put, uh, say yes in a group chat. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, it's me posting fucking Megatron sitting in the hot tub, squeezing his ducky, going, yes! Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It, it's perfect. But I fucking like, love that show. The pinnacle of this entire movie experience needs to be at every cinema in Australia. It's a fully yeah. licensed cinema. You can go there, you can get a rum and coke, you can get anything it's fucking mm. great mm. but when I was buying the ticket it offered beer and popcorn movie deal so I bought yeah. the ticket I went over to the concierge desk I said right I'd like to get a beer and popcorn movie ticket I'm expecting a plastic cup with some like a small plastic cup with some beer in it and a popcorn mm. and yeah. the lady goes sure which beer would you like pick a six pack and they've got a fridge yeah. of six packs at South Australia so it's mainly Coopers and all that kind of stuff, West End Ale and all that. So yep. I picked a, a six pack of uh, Coopers Pale Ale. It's not a bad drop. So she takes the six pack, she pulls two out of it, pops both of them, then puts the whole six, like the four unopened and the two open beers into ice and hands me a jumbo popcorn. Fucking 25 hey. bucks. Holy fuck. Best money oh. ever spent. Like, we yeah, have so. um, licensed cinemas here in Brisbane, but they are yeah. nowhere near the sound, like, that no. kind of thing. Unless, unless the weirdest one we just Like, our found. popcorn deal would have probably been a medium popcorn and a pint of beer. Yeah. A pint if you're lucky. Oh, also, that's another oh, thing yeah. that fucked me up in South Australia. We went for Pints. dinner, and on the menu it said, here's a burger and a chips and a schooner of beer. So, oh, cool, yeah, fuck, I'll get that. They give it to me, and it's a fucking midi. I took it back to the girl, said, this is a midi. She goes, no, that's a schooner. No, that's a fucking midi. She no, goes, well, here it's a schooner. There's a difference in it. I said, well, can I have a pint? Yeah, sure, you can have a pint. That's a fucking schooner. Oh, <laughs> really? What the fuck? You have to ask for... What are you doing, South Australia? You have to ask for an imperial pint to get an actual pint. <laughs> fucking... I that hate just when they pull pissed that. me off. So yeah, no, we, found a, we found a really good fucking snitty bar down there called the, uh, called the Schnitthaus. And they do steins. They got a whole range oh, of yeah, German beers the, the and everything. And holy fuck, that's where we went back to because we could just All say, the... "Give me a stein of that," and then you get a yeah. liter of beer, and it's so yeah. fucking good. Uh, the, the picture you sent us um, was great because that threw me back into our uni days. Remember the like the same steins yeah. we used to have yeah. every drinking session. Because um, we used to buy Kaiser Dom, uh, and it would come with a liter of beer and a stein to drink it out of. Yeah. That was a great one. We worked out the perfect measurement for making spirits in that one. That was good. <laughs> one bubble to three bubbles. Yeah, one, one bubble to three bubbles. And it worked perfectly every time. But, yeah. So, every cinema should have a six-pack of popcorn deal. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I like that. As a good any one. cinema I don't that like is going to cinemas anymore. needs this. Like, eat, share yeah. it. I don't care. Do half a six-pack each and share a popcorn. Yeah. But... I don't like going to cinemas anymore. But you do that... I'd I definitely probably that would get me back to, back to more fucking cinemas. 
Cinemas need to be more of an event again, I think. They have, like, yeah, they, they can't just rely on, we're the first place you can see a movie, because streaming. Uh, so now I can just make it, everything is gold class. Everything's an event. Just make it affordable for people. Mm. Maybe pull out, or, or, and the bench seats there were fucking great. They're nice padded seats. Oh, you had a good yes. fucking tray there to put your beer on. It's fucking great. But yeah. if they pulled out all of that and gave you like a almost a, a half moon shape where you could sit there with fucking three mates and then, I don't know, split a carton and a large popcorn each. There's a six pack each. Go for gold. Booths, and then do a fucking movie marathon. Be interesting. That would be fun, actually. Like, booth seating in a, uh, a movie. Just so you can have a few mates yeah, around the no. little table. But, like, I've... open booth seating. Not, like, face-to-face. Yeah. Like, yeah. A like, a, yeah, like you're saying, like a moon. Like, a semicircle. I remember that one time, me and you swoosh. Hmm. Um, I it was something that happened in your life, and you weren't doing super great. And oh, me yeah, and you yeah. hung out at a bar all afternoon, then went to smoke stogies, and then snuck a couple of six packs into a movie theater. That was a good day. And we went and, we went and watched 2012. Oh, and we yes. Were just down the, it was just me and Swoosh down the front of the uh, cinema because I think there were like four guys way up the back. Yeah. It's just me and Swoosh down the front just getting sloshed watching this trashy movie. Cackling at Best this Best afternoon. Thing. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, we felt kind of bad to start with because, like, we thought we were disturbing the guys behind us. But then they joined in at one point. It's like, fuck it, hey, we're done. Like, we're safe now. So, like, getting sloshed and watching a movie. Yeah, man, that's yeah, a good no. time. Like, that makes it a proper event. Like, if you get a couple of mates together, you get a six-pack each or even you split it mm. between two blokes, sit back, have a beer. It doesn't matter if the movie shit has. You've got your mates there to fucking have a pop exactly. or have a beer. Like, that's just like, as much the experience. I used to do movie nights back at my old place, um, and I remember having a movie night with a few mates, and we were watching the original Alien and Aliens, mm. and it was one of the best things. Like, we all know that movie, so we were like, we don't, we can just talk, it'll be fine. Mm. Yeah. And it spawned so many in jokes of just, just nuke it from orbit. Fucking, why are you going down there, Ripley? You know what's there. Don't do yeah, the thing. Just, just yeah. fucking do it. <laughs> just nuke just, it just from orbit. Game like, over, man. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> No, I remember that time when we went and did the uh, Spider-Man movie marathon at that cinema once. Oh, yeah, We did yeah. Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. And, like, a lot of people turned up for movie 1, and we were you know, giving it a little bit of shit, but, mm. you know, we're being generally quiet because there's a lot of people here. 2, almost empty cinema. Yeah. So we just started letting rip. Uh, that's when and you by the third movie, it. it was just like, this movie's the dumbest one, and we're the only people here. Right. Yeah. Fuck it. Right. Rip into Only that matched bit. by us seeing, um, um, uh, what was it? Um, the monster one. Monster Hunter. Yeah, Monster Where oh, it was fuck. literally, start to finish, just people we knew. Yeah. It was our <laughs> friend group watching this, and all of us are Monster Hunter fans of the games. We're like, why are you Live using a flame weapon fucking... against the Ratless? <laughs> <laughs> It was just an entire cinema live roasting a movie. It yeah. was so good. It was like a live riff track. It was so much fun. There's something to be said for just getting trashed and watching trash movies at the yeah. cinema. I yeah. love watching trash movies. They're great. They also... Sorry, I, I just remember they had a poster there. They call it... Uh, well, they do Horror Movie Fridays. where Because there's 12 cinemas nice. there. So the... I think they pick a certain number of cinemas. And they do... Uh, movie marathon of three old B-grade horror movies. Oh, no. Nice. And, like, they're fucking... I, one of them was The Thing, and that was the only one I knew of. Oh, I love but the they thing. did, like, a, two another really old horror movies. But in your ticket, you got a six-pack of beer, popcorn, and then they had, like, between the movies, they had food come out, like nibble trays and hmm. shit. So it was like an yeah. event. You buy a ticket, there's three movies, you get a yeah. feed, you get some drinks... Yeah. But you get a couple of mates together, that's a fucking great night out. That's a good actually, night, man. Like, yeah. There's a group in Brisbane who do it as well. Yes. But they're a little less consistent about it. It's called the 2-Bit Movie Club. We went and saw their um, Adams Family uh, yeah. one. It was so much fun. Double feature of the original two Adams Family movies. Yeah. Um, it was in their rotoscoped lightning um, set. So they do a theme, and yeah. that one was rotoscoped lightning. And Each one had like, like literally two seconds of rotoscope lightning. Yeah, it's like, yeah, no, but we it did this counted just for it. <laughs> <laughs> but like they, it's at, a, at the New Farm Cinema, which is actually not a bad little cinema. It's very nice. Um, they gave you pins. They had artwork. They had lots of stuff to buy mm. if you're into that. Um, it's like a mini. They festival. had uh, when you when, when before the movie started, they played 
period accurate Adam Sandley themed ads. Yes, for the original so Adam like, Family. They got the like original Pepsi ads yeah. and stuff that played during the cinema run to play before the movies, and then yeah. they played the movies. It was fantastic. Like, They've actually, I don't know if you'd want to go see it, Swoosh, but next month they're doing Con Air. Oh, fuck yes. I'll go see Con Air. That was a good movie. All right, I'll, I'll give you the links. We'll go see Con Air. Hells yes. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, no, like, we, I keep an eye on them occasionally, but I haven't checked in a while, because it's just a nice group of people who want to watch old school yeah. movies and just chill out, and it was good fun. The problem is, a lot of their movies get played at Netherworld, and I don't like Netherworld that much. Yeah, same. I'm... I'm not a fan of it. But that. whenever they go to New Farm Cinema, I'm like, ooh, what are you playing? Yeah. Because I might actually go see that. That'll be really good. Pretty much. Uh-huh. Yeah, after this, I'll link you the, um, the Con Air one, and we, we, we can go see Con Air. I like Con Air. It's a good one. I'll probably buy the tickets like I did last time. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so there, there, you know, there are places up here that do it. Uh, also, uh, what is it? Um, Garden City does it as well. Oh, nice. Um, I went and saw... I actually got to see Die Hard on a big screen at, oh, at, at, um, at Garden City. I am jealous. That was fucking sick. Damn it. But, oh. I'm, I'm disappointed I missed out on their Blues Brothers um, one a while back, because that was... That oh, would have been so good. I love the original. I know a lot of people don't like the second one, but I would have watched them both. But <laughs> I, I like the second one to a point. It's got some of my favorite actors in it. Like, you know, they're, they're fine. It's not as good, I mean, but still. Unfortunately for me, like, the two best things about that movie, uh, John Goodman's in it. Yeah. And I love John Goodman. Mm. And the song he does, Looking for a Fox, which Uh is in the, you know, opening 20 minutes of the movie. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'll watch most things John Goodman, because I just, I love that man. He seems fun. I mean, The Righteous Gemstones is just Ah, peak TV. Hells yes, I love that series. See, the last 10 minutes of this conversation was showing, like, cinemas don't have to be dead. There are things they can do to make them... Valid. Yeah. They not can just, bring us back. I can stream it. But yeah. You're not like Netflix, you can't share a password. But if you go to a cinema, you can share an experience, as corny as that yeah. fucking is. Yeah. You go there with a couple well, of mates, have a drink, watch a shitty movie. Yeah. Oddly enough, I don't want to go to a cinema to watch the newest thing. Yeah. No. I, I want to go to see a bunch of old watch shit. Something old that I can talk through and have a laugh at and fuck around fuck with. Yeah. Just for the. Or experience even around. if I'm not even if I'm not gonna laugh and talk through it, something that I wanted to always see. Like, I, look, I will freely admit I am like the biggest aliens. To, I've never gotten to see that movie on a big screen. Yeah, yeah. I've watched it in normal definition, high definition, Blu-ray definition on a 4K TV. Yeah, but I've never seen it on a big screen because I just haven't had the opportunity to. Yeah, that is the last. I thing would jump at that. Left. Like cinemas have that one thing, which is it is it hits different to see a good movie on the big screen. Like, yeah, look, if, if you've never seen Three Hundred on a big screen, oh fuck yeah, yeah, that is a fun movie on a big screen. But mostly, oddly enough, less because of the big screen and more that surround sound. Yeah, yeah. The, the visceral Getting that feeling, feeling of, like, of it. Yeah. Mm. You can feel it in your chest. Yeah, but like it's, even it's crazy. even though like a, a classic, like a uh, classic uh, original three Star Wars movie marathon. Put that on yeah. a cinema, or that'd be good. Like Aliens one and two, I'd probably give three a miss, and four is just weird. But yeah, just one and two. Yeah, just yeah. one and two. <laughs> or a, a, a Lord of the Rings extended marathon, or yeah, I don't that know. Would be, I that fucking would be an love them. One. Oh yeah, it'd be yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, essentially, what we're still boiling it all down to, make it an event. Yeah. yeah. Make it something I want, not just, oh yeah, we've got the new Marvel movie. Yeah. If the movie is no longer the draw, you have to give something on top. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't just be, oh, we have that movie you wanted. It's like, Nate, what else? I can just stream this on in, on Marvel next week. What do you have to bring to the table here apart from that movie? Mm. Like, and most of the time, it's the ticket costs 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, like, and it's, it's not fucking worth some of them because it's a mm. shitty fucking movie that all the tropes are done for. Yeah, I actually used to really love it when I worked. Um, I used to have Monday and Tuesdays off, not um, weekends. Mm. I watched so many movies back then because what I used to do is I used to go to the first showing of a movie on a weekday in gold class because Ooh, to get nice. a butt in a seat. They made it twenty bucks. Mm. That's pretty fucking awesome. I would, I would do the amount of bucks. movies I sat in a gold class cinema for, where I was the only motherfucker there. Yeah, fucking good times. Yeah, nice. But I don't do that anymore because I get weekends off, not weekdays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you lost but a I mean, hospitality hell, weekend. 
when uh, like a couple of years ago, I used to um, me and my housemate used to do what we called a movie day. We would go to the cinema at South Bank, and you know all the movies are eight bucks. Yeah. So we just chain movies together. Yeah. It'd be like, it dude, it, it's hot as dicks. Let's just go sit in the air conditioning and watch movies all day. All right, let's go. Yeah, no, I, I remember we did that a few times as well back in in the day. Yeah. It's like, well, let's go watch a movie. Like, get out of it. Like, everyone want to watch another one? Let's go do another one. Yeah. Like, good times. Fuck world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on that depressing note, I think we should round things out for the, the, the evening. Yep. Yeah. You're not getting an <laughs> extra right, 30 minutes out of us this time. <laughs> no, it's a... <laughs> That's a, well, I'm not going to say it's a one-time deal, but it's going to be a, a rare deal. Rare deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a good one. Bye. See ya.